in this video, the third in a three-part series based on the New Jersey Preschool Classroom Teaching Guidelines, you'll see how preschool teachers incorporate math thinking and learning throughout the day. You'll see active engagement in math learning during both small and large group times, as well as during play in a variety of centers. As we explore math in the classroom, you'll see number sense that includes quantities, one-to-one -one correspondence, and using numbers. We'll examine math content and skills, including geometry and spatial relations, and measurement. We'll see how children use math processing skills, problem solving, designing and analyzing representation, and making math connections to the real world. If you want to be an architect and an engineer and build houses or bridges, you use drawings to help you. Finally, we'll think about how math can be infused into the preschool environment all day, every day. Math is important in preschool because math is important in our lives to be functioning adults. Young children have the ability to think mathematically, to solve mathematical problems, to make mathematical connections, and to learn about and use mathematical terms. Math in preschool is much more than just counting. It involves number of concepts, sequence, patterning, measurement, problem solving. Let's begin with number sense. I think that every child is at a different level of math learning and we have to know where they are so that we can support their learning with the materials and activities. What song do you want to sing at, what time of the day is this? A large group time. At large group time. The children graphed what song they want to sing at large group time. And while she's writing it, we're going to write it across, down, and around. So now if we have five friends who want to sing five little monkeys and five friends who want to sing five little ducks, that means it is equal. I didn't know that it was going to be equal. So I took that teachable moment to have them see it visually and to use their hands counting five fingers on one hand, five fingers on the other hand, to show them that they're the same, that we have five and five, and then I did put the equal sign so that they can relate same and equal, that it means the same thing. It is the same. Okay, next one. My unit of study is apples. We're doing math activities, patterning, measuring, in the house area, the children are working with the apples, doing one-to-one -one correspondence, putting the apples one to a plate, serving each other, serving the baby dolls. Today, we were transitioning to work time, and we used number puzzles. Everyone got one piece, and their piece had the dots with the number on it. They had to count their dots, and I would pull a number and say, who has this number? Who has uh, six? Camilla, you have the six? Okay. Where would you like to work, Camila? There's lots of math skills within it. One-to-one -one correspondence with counting, quantity, recognizing numerals. Math comes in all shapes and sizes. Recognizing and comparing shapes and interpreting spatial relations are the foundation for learning math content and skills. So your cards have little dots on them, and we want to cover them up. Cover up your little dots. When I set up this small group, my intention was numbers and counting. I'd set up dot cards for the students to put bears on to cover the dots. Some of them did, and some of them just took it in another direction. Look at Jed Aldo. He lined up all the bears on top of the basket. Lining up the bears and setting them up all around the perimeter gave us a chance to talk about arrangement, spatial relations. Hay uno más. Where will he fit? I try wherever possible to introduce new vocabulary. To extend the spatial relations, I pointed out that he was putting the bears all around the perimeter of the basket. Now all the bears are going around the basket. You're putting them all around the perimeter. That's what it means when you put them all around the outside. Let's see if they all fit. Let's go to the right and see this enormous structure that somebody built. 
During work time, I was amazed by the structure that Giovanni had built in the discovery area. How many more squares do you need to make it the same level? One. And you don't have any more squares? <gasps> you built a square using the two triangles. Is it a perfect? It's a perfect fit. It's a perfect fit. Now over. <gasps> you went over the number nine. Juan began jumping on the rug. And to give him more focus, we started talking about how he went over the numbers, jumping forward, backward, over. He was playing and I was saying it as he was doing it. It was an opportunity to infuse learning about spatial relationships. Do you know what this is used for? Sabes para qué se usa? They took the measuring tapes and I saw that they weren't really using them. I wanted them to see how to use them. Remember when we measured how many circles tall you were? Now we're gonna measure how long you are. Ve, ahora tú lo puedes medir. Ven, Jenny, ponlo aquí en los pies. And let them measure each other. Aquí está Juan. You figured out that we can measure Spooky Cookie by putting all the apples on top of each other. Our unit of study has been apples. And I thought, why don't we measure with apples and count them? Spooky Cookie is five apples tall. For this lesson, we have a collection of small plastic apples. I asked the children, what can we measure? Someone said, let's measure Spooky Cookie, a little ghost puppet. I followed their lead. They wanted to measure a block. What should we do, Wendell? Put it over here. And then a car, and then a person. It was such a teachable moment. The kids are telling Riley, you need to move down, it's not leveled off. When you're measuring, start at the same point. They took that lesson and they just flew away with it. Being a good problem solver is an important mathematical skill. Helping children to think in complex ways builds on important math process skills they will need and use throughout life. Hmm, how can we get that to stand up? Oh, that was a great idea. You solved the problem. Now the cylinders won't fall down because there's something supporting them. During my interaction with Naomi, she was faced with a problem. How am I going to get the cylinder blocks to stand on the carpet? Naomi selected the square unit blocks as a brace for the cylinders. Daniela, do you know what this means? What do you, what do you see here? What's our message number one? Girls. You see some girls? Yeah. One, two, three. One boy. And one boy. What do you think that message is? Right here, this says visitors. We have special visitors today. As a part of our grading time, I included four stick figures, <laughs> three female and one male, and the word visitors. Knowing they couldn't read the word visitors, I wanted to give them a visual representation of what was happening today. They could look around and actually see who was in the room. Each figure up on the board actually represented a person that was there with us in the room. And that reinforces children's understanding of quantity. When teachers connect math to children's everyday activities and life, they help make math meaningful for children. What is inside the mystery bag? This is our mystery bag. And we have to vote and see, what do we think it is? Is it a rock bag or is it a leaf? So I'm going to pass it around and you can tell me what you think is inside. Is it a rock? We were taking a vote about what was in the mystery bag. What is in there? We do a tally and part of teaching students how to tally and, and putting that slash up for the fifth mark is teaching them this little rhyme. One, two, three, four. Now, now we shut, shut the, the door. door. Some of the kids will actually raise their arms as though they're making that slash or they're closing the door, which will become a visual for them. It's important to make connections to their real life. If you can tie in an experience they've had and it helps to support what we're learning. Fox. 
Rocks. You think yeah. there are rocks inside? One, two, three, four. Now we shut, now we shut the, the door. door. Yoga baby spreads his arms like a butterfly. So I want you guys to open up your arms, stretch them out, and close them. And remember, like Liam said, we're going to breathe like a pattern. In, out. In, out. While we were doing yoga, one child had mentioned how breathing was a very important part of yoga, which is true. And then I just linked it to a mathematical idea by saying that our breathing is following a pattern, breathing in and out, in and out. It was a way to tie their real world experiences into the yoga. Oh. That's different. Now look at Jonathan. Jonathan switched it so his leg is back. Are you finished? Do you think you'll need to add more blocks? How many do you think? If you had to estimate and take a guess, how many more blocks do you think you need? A hundred. A hundred more blocks? Wow, which blocks are we gonna use? I wanna use mathematical vocabulary as much as possible with the children so that they become familiar with those words every day during their play. Oh, you mean the cylinders. We could use the cylinders. So we use words like cylinder and estimate and predict, and they can use them on their own. And now I see Justin changed our schedule. What time of the day is it? Lunch group time. A schedule is a great tool to make the kids comfortable and secure. They learn about sequencing, about predictability. They can learn words like before and after, and they can understand what those words mean. Good morning, Aiden. I don't know where I'm going to come here. You're going to work at the computer too? You're going to do that first, and what, do you, what will you do secondly? The toy area? Yeah. Okay. During planning time, he said he was going to the computer area first, but I want to make sure they have a plan after that. So they need to think about what they're going to do next. So by asking them what they're going to do first, second, and third, I'm introducing them to ordinal numbers. Hi, Eliana, what are you going to do first? In the block area? So what can you tell me about the size of the shelves? Hmm? You can put one inside of the, of, the, of the other one. Yes, if you see, you are arranging them from smallest to largest. You're doing seriation. I noticed that the child was exploring the materials, different size and the different shapes, putting one on top of each other. He was nesting them. Ooh. I made it until cleanup time. Thank you, Stacy. I know it's hard when children are, are engaged in an activity. We want to give them a heads up, a warning. We do the five fingers and a sign. They don't really have an understanding of time just yet, but they do understand what's right in front of them. The number of fingers are getting smaller, the time is getting shorter. What about, look, do you know what I just noticed? What's this on her sock? Line. Line. So we see. And circles, so we see silver, navy, silver, navy. To help children see patterns in everyday life, I make sure that if I do see a student creating a pattern, I ask them, tell me about it. And my hope is that they are able to read the pattern to me. And if they are unable to, I will give them the language. They're going to start red, green, red, green, red, green, red, what follow next? Look the color, look over here, look. Dee, dee, dee. Yeah, green. I want children to use math to make meaningful connections to their everyday life. In my house, I have two, two floors, and we call those stories, right? Yeah, yeah. So now we have two levels. I have stuff in my house. You have, can you go upstairs in your house? Do you have stairs in your house? Yeah. Yeah? So that's two, so that the next level is a, is a second story, so that's two levels. The importance of math in preschool is teaching it all day long. Because when you give meaning to the learning and the child could connect it to what they do daily, that learning becomes important to them and it'll stay with them. It will help them become more successful later on in life. These are skills that they, that they need. Where else did you work? In the discovery. I'm going to add a tally mark to the discovery area because you worked in the discovery area also. So 
children are whole learners. They don't learn math during math time when they're playing with math materials only. It means looking for opportunities to integrate what children are doing and learning and discussing and knowing about so that children get the problem solving skills and get attention to the varying New Jersey standards that need to be addressed in pre-K. What happened since I left, guys? You made another one? Oh, it looks much taller than when I left. How did you get it so high? Math learning is happening for children during every part of every day. In addition to active observing, understanding, interacting, and questioning, teachers intentionally and thoughtfully plan to embrace each moment and every opportunity. For more information about best practices in preschool classrooms, search online for the New Jersey Preschool Classroom Teaching Guidelines, a comprehensive document outlining how effective teachers support and enhance children's learning in high-quality preschool classrooms.